So we have a function from capital X to capital Y, and A and B are subsets of capital X, and we have to prove this set equality. Before we begin the proof, let's talk a little bit about the notation involved. So F of A, this is called the direct image of A under F, or just simply direct image. It's the set of all of the Y's in capital Y, so all of the y's in the codomain, such that y is equal to f of x for some x in capital A. So what does this mean graphically? Let's draw a quick picture before we begin the proof. So if this is capital X, this is your domain. And then over here we'll have capital Y this is your codomain. Then let's say that this yellow blob here, or yellow circle, let's say that's A. And F takes A to another set, which we denote by F of A. So this will be F of A. So it's the set of all of the Y's in the codomain that come from A, right? So it's a set of all the Y values that come from A in the domain. So F takes all of these X values in A to F of A. So it's called the direct image. Okay, let's go ahead and do this proof. Let's use this color, here we go, so proof. So because we're running out of room, I'm going to write the claim down again. So claim that f of a union b is equal to f of a union f of b. So we'll start by taking an element in this set here, and we'll show it belongs to the set on the right-hand side. So take any y in the direct image of A union B under F. So what does it mean for Y to be in this set? Well, this means there exists an element, let's call it X, which lives inside the union such that F takes X and sends it to Y. That's exactly what it means for Y to be in this set. Let's go ahead and write down what it means for X to be in the union. So since X is in A union B, then by definition of union, this means that X is in A or X is in B. So what does this mean? Well, if X is in A, then Y, which is equal to F of X, is in F of A. Or, likewise, y, which is equal to f of x, is in f of b. So y is in f of a, or y is in f of b. That's precisely what it means for y to be in the union of the direct image of a with the direct image of b all under f. So we started with a y in this set, and we showed it what belongs to this set. So therefore, or thus, f of a union b is contained in f of a union f of b. So we've shown one inclusion. Now we'll show the other. Let me use a different color for the other inclusion. Let's use yellow. So now take any y in f of a union f of b. So this means, by definition of union, y is in f of a, or y is in f of b. Now, the proof is the same from here on out, regardless of which case we take. So I'm going to say assume, without loss of generality, that y is in f of a. If y is in f of b, 
the argument is very, very similar. It's pretty much exactly the same. So y is an f of a. So this means there exists an x in a such that y is equal to f of x. Now, a is a subset of a union b, and x is in a. So x is also in a union b. Well, if x is in a union b, this means that y, which is equal to f of x, is in the direct image of a union b under f. Now, if y is an f of b, the argument is exactly the same. That's why I said without loss of generality, just so I wouldn't have to write uh, the same thing twice. So we started with a y in this set, and we showed it's in this set. So this shows that f of a union f of b is contained in f of a union b. So we showed both inclusions. The first one, we proved it up here. And the second one is down here. So these two sets are subsets of each other. That means they must be the same set. So therefore, f of a union b is equal to f of a union f of b. And that's the proof. I hope this helps someone out there.